the madness begin. March is here, and we have four local teams invited to the big dance. My teammates believe in me, my coaches believe in me, and Washington State fans, they believe in me. For the Cougs, it's the first trip here in 16 years. While Gonzaga is looking to make some noise as the Bulldogs make their 25th straight tournament appearance. Our camaraderie and our chemistry is at a high level right now, and uh, we look forward to that, taking that into the tournament. The Gonzaga women had one of the best regular seasons in the country. Now they'll look to keep it going in front of the hometown fans. That's been one of our goals this season um, that we kind of made for ourselves. And no local team has waited longer than the Iwu women, who are going dancing for the first time in 37 years. It's time for March Madness here on Crim 2. Hello, hello, and thank you for joining us for this Crim 2 Tournament Central Special. I'm sports director Travis Green. We have a lot to talk about with four of our local teams getting an invite to the big dance. We'll be tracking their progress in March Madness on our giant brackets. On the men's side, we have Gonzaga and WSU. And over on the women's brackets, we'll be following Gonzaga in Eastern Washington. And we're not just following the teams from Spokane. Crim 2 is on the road, bringing you unique stories and access to our local teams and players. Amanda Rowley is in Omaha right now, where she is meeting up with the Cougs. But we want to start with Andrew Quinn. He's on the road in Salt Lake City, where the Zags begin their tournament run. Andrew, how are the Zags feeling ahead of tip-off? Well, Travis, speaking with the team, they say that they're feeling confident heading into this matchup with McNeese State. Now, this is going to be a battle of styles. McNeese State runs out a small lineup with quick guards, whereas, as we know, the Zags have three bigs in their starting lineup. Gonzaga is looking to use that size advantage to their benefit. We just got to play at our own pace. Um, not get sped up by what they do on defense. Um, and just play our basketball, and we'll be we'll be good. We are bigger than them, and uh, we got guys who can shoot the ball as well. So if they want to double team or um, help off any shooters, we can hit threes as well and space the floor. And then also with Graham, Braden, and Anton, and myself, um, beat them inside as well. Them playing three big man, um, I feel like we can move faster. Uh, some coach told us about we were going to have to rebound more. The guards are going to have to at least help rebound, just them having size on us. So I feel like it's a give and take on offense and the defensive end. Southland Player of the Year, Shahad A. Wells, is the straw that stirs the drink for the Cowboys. He's, he's playing at a really high level right now, shooting the ball well, gets to the rim, scores at the rim. So he'll, he'll be a tough cover for us, but um, I think we have a pretty solid plan and we're going to go in there confident like we always are. We played against good guards all year and um, we have a, a good bunch of guards over here. So. We take our guards over there. The big test for McNeese State will be defending AP All-America Honorable Mention, Graham E.K. What's kind of your plan to, to try and neutralize him as best you can? Pray. He's a tremendous player. Uh, you let him get to his left hand, I mean, he's going to make that every time. Our best chance to stop him is to get him in foul trouble. When he's out there, we're going to have a very challenging time uh, stopping him. We're prepared for uh, uh, quite a battle. So uh, it's going to be interesting to kind of a little bit of contrast in styles. So the Zags will look to survive a possible 5-12 upset. The tip off is set for 425 p.m. Spokane time. I'll have all your coverage out here in Salt Lake City. Travis. And Andrew, before we let you go, I'm curious. The last time Gonzaga took the court was a loss to the hated rival St. Mary's. Did the team talk about that at all in today's press conference? They sure did. Travis, talking to the team today, these guys said that's in the past. We're ready to go right now. And they even added that that loss only added fuel to the fire. You meant we mentioned on Selection Sunday how people picking McNeese to have this upset is adding fuel to the fire. So that loss only added a little bit more of that chip on the zag shoulder. Travis. Yeah, makes sense. Thank you, Andrew. All right, let's take a quick look at the numbers to see how Gonzaga matches up with McNeese. You'll see the Zags have a slight advantage on offense. The Bulldogs are outscoring the Cowboys by about four and a half points per game. However, McNeese may have an edge on defense where they are holding opponents to 61 and a half points per game. Gonzaga on the other end has had a much tougher schedule, though, helps out with those stats, and you see that reflected in the higher net ranking. 
All right, here's what, where, how you can watch the Zags. The Gonzaga men face McNeese in the first round. The game is scheduled to start at 4.25 p.m. and will be on TBS. All right, let's talk about those Cougs out in Omaha. Washington State is also preparing for its first game in the big dance. The seventh seeded Cougs up against 10th seeded Drake. For Washington State, this is a whole new experience, and that includes head coach Kyle Smith, who's back in the big dance for the first time in over a decade. As a whole, the team is trying its best to stay focused and on task, uh, no matter how difficult that may be. Senior Andre Yakimovsky says this season is exactly what the team's been building towards, and Coach Smith is trying his best to ensure this storied season lasts a little bit longer. I think we, we made all the necessary steps, um, you know, to make it to NCAA tournament. You know, like my my last two years, we made it to NIT uh, twice, and then we made it to Final Four of NIT. So, you know, this was the year that, you know, it's supposed to be a special year for us, and we are ready to, you know, to, to make it even more special. It's like everyone's asking, like, how do your guys stay focused? I said, they don't, but that you just try to do the best you can. Um, just this fear of missing out and rumors and gossip and – Part of, what, part of what brings the, the excitement to the deal, but, you know, I, we owe it to these guys to give our best effort and do that, and they've been awesome all year. Now, Crim 2's Amanda Rowley is on the road with WSU. She joins us live from Omaha, where the Cougs are dancing for the first time in 16 years. Amanda? That's right, WSU fans, they're showing up here in Omaha and they are beyond excited that WSU is part of March Madness for the first time in 16 years. They are eager. These fans are just so looking forward to seeing WSU play in the first round. WSU fans are descending on the CHI Health Center for March Madness and they come with high hopes for the team. Go Cougs! Some fans made it to the arena in time to watch the Cougs get acquainted with the court. Amazing. Oh, awesome. 16 years. It's incredible. It's We're incredible. so excited. During practice, the WSU band gave a little taste of the excitement we can expect when the Cougs play in round one. Oh, yeah. These students know they won't be alone in supporting WSU this week. Our fan base turns out anywhere, whether it's online, watching live, whether they're here or not, Cougs are everywhere, anywhere across the world. So you know what? I think our fans are going to be here. Now, just minutes from the arena, Cougs can show their team spirit by doing something, well, they're good at. Turns out Omaha is the home of the Jello Shot Challenge. Cheers. It became popular in the College World Series. This year is the first ever March Madness Jello Shot Challenge. Fans compete to buy the most Jello shots during the tournament. The winning team gets bragging rights, and the proceeds from the challenge are donated to a local charity. For every shot bought and consumed will be will be on the board. Rocco's manager Pat McAvoy says this challenge is a unique way for fans to support their team and drink for a charitable cause. Some people are their schools, you know shot team. They, they, should, they should get a letter for being on the, the university jello shot team. The record was set last year during the CWS by LSU fans at nearly 69,000 shots. So who knows? Are the Cougs up for the challenge? Go Cougs! <laughs> Now, the WSU Alumni Association is hosting a meetup for fans who are here in Omaha. They'll meet up at the old mattress factory three hours before the game. Travis. Now, Amanda, before you go, uh, you are a Washington State alum. I know you're out there working. Are you going to help with that jello shot number out there? <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell my boss. No, <laughs> I wouldn't be a coo, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't hear you. What's that? I can't hear you over the Cougar fight song. What is that? Fight, 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 fight for Washington State. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Amanda. Right, let's take a closer look at the matchup between Wazoo and Drake. The numbers are pretty close. The Bulldogs have the advantage on offense, outscoring the Cougs by six points per game. WSU has the slight edge on defense. And when it comes to the net ranking, boy, oh boy, only three spots separate the two teams. We'll see how it all plays out on Thursday night. Tip-off for that matchup against Drake is scheduled for 7.05 p.m. 
You can watch that game on True TV. We still have more excitement and more teams to talk about as our Tournament Central Special continues. Up next, we hear from the Gonzaga women and Eastern Eagles as they get ready for the tournament. And you don't have to go far to experience March Madness. We have an inside look at Spokane Arena getting ready to host eight teams here in the Lilac City. Welcome back to our Crim 2 Tournament Central Special. I'm Sports Director Travis Green. Now we want to talk now about our local women's teams that are playing in March Madness. Let's start with Gonzaga. The Zags got a big win before the tournament even started as they earned a number four seed. That means the Gonzaga women will host the first two rounds of the tournament in the kennel. By the way, the GU women have not lost a game at home in more than two years. They open the tournament this year against number 13 seed UC Irvine. A quick look at the numbers here for you, and you'll see why the Zags are heavy favorites in this game. The Bulldogs outscore the Anteaters by 18 points per game. UC Irvine allows slightly fewer points per game, but they haven't faced many teams with offensive power to the extent that Gonzaga has. And take a look at the huge difference in the net rankings. Gonzaga sits at number 12, while UC Irvine is all the way back at 123rd. Gonzaga opens their tournament run on Saturday. Have to wait a little bit. Tip-off is scheduled for 4.30 p.m. in the kennel. If you aren't going to the game, you can watch it on ESPN2. Zag's big year comes as women's college basketball in general is growing in popularity. Millions of people are turning, tuning in to see what the hype is all about. Crim 2's Channing Curtis sat down with Gonzaga standout Yvonne Ejim and head coach Lisa Fortier to talk all about it. I feel like we've seen like a definite shift in kind of like the attention um, that we get just from women's uh, like college sports and women's college basketball. I feel like more people are talking about it, noticing it. What has it been like for you getting to play here in the kennel? Because it's kind of a, a legendary hub for college basketball. Oh yeah, it's definitely been a blessing to play in this environment with all these like supportive people and kind of the energy that we've received, especially this year, has just been phenomenal. Every single game we come to the kennel, like it's just a lot of high energy and a lot of hype. The women's team has a huge legacy here. It has has produced so many outstanding players. What would you say to people, like I said, outside of Spokane who maybe aren't quite as aware as they should be of the legacy of women's basketball here at Gonzaga? Well, I get it a lot. You know, people when they're on the plane or they figure out, they ask what I do or, oh, at Gonzaga, did you play there? Uh, or what, whatever. And uh, their, bas their basketball team is really good. How the, how's the women's team? And it's uh, luckily, I'm usually really gracious and like we're pretty good too, actually. Is there something that changes in how you play and how you practice and even how you gear up for games this time of year? Yeah, I think if anything, it's a lot of like fine tuning right now um, and just working on the details that we need to work on just because we've been flowing so well as a team right now that it's like we can just clean up a little bit of stuff and then just being consistent to whatever our topic or our goal at the beginning of the season was and I feel like for us that's been consistency and also being uncomfortable or comfortable in uncomfortable situations um, and just continuing to hold that to a high standard. And let's talk about uh, Coach uh, Lisa Fortier because mm -hmm. I mean of course she's a huge component in this team and really the the culture here mm -hmm. at, like with Gonzaga and Gonzaga basketball especially. So what is what are some of the things that she says to you guys in trying to get you ready? for this time of year. Yeah, I think if anything, a lot of the stuff I say comes from Coach Lisa and kind of how she um, wants to motivate us to just continue to get better. Um, I try to just, I know that what we do is collective, right? So just like what we're doing as a team is not just because of Yvonne or just because of Lynn or just because of Lee or anybody else. And what we do with our team is not just because of us. You know, our guys being good is great for us and we collaborate a ton. So try to always be gracious, but I, I do not have a problem making sure that they know that our, our women's team is really good too. And if they're around, that they should look us up. Ah, bravo. Thank you to the great Channing Curtis. As we mentioned, Gonzaga is hosting the first two rounds of the tournament. Here's a look at the other teams coming to Spokane. Utah and South Dakota State play each other on Saturday night. The winner of that game will then face the winner of the Gonzaga UC Irvine matchup on Monday. 
Now Gonzaga isn't the only local women team playing in March Madness. The Eagles are headed to the tournament for the first time in 37 years. Oh yeah, that's what ending a drought sounds like right there. Exciting moment for Eastern Washington University. You can hear the cheers as the Eags were announced in the NCAA tournament. Eastern earned a number 14 seed and faces number three Oregon State out in Corvallis. This will be a pretty big test for the Eagles. On paper, the two teams match up pretty well. Oregon State averages about two and a half more points per game, while Eastern has a slight edge on defense. Oregon State has a big lead in the net rankings though, but the Beavers have struggled a bit recently with four losses in the past month. As for Eastern, the Eags are riding a 13 game win streak. And we'll see if the Eags can keep that streak going on a Friday night. Eastern tips off against Oregon State at 5 p.m. You can watch that one on ESPNU. We do also want to take a moment to celebrate the WSU women. The Cougs barely missed out on the NCAA tournament, but they will still get to play postseason basketball. The Cougs earned a one seed in the brand spanking new women's basketball invitational tournament. WSU hosts Lamar in Pullman on Thursday night at 6 o'clock. That game will also stream on ESPN+. Still ahead on our Tournament Central Special, we're talking about the teams who are headed to Spokane this week for March Madness, including one team who probably wishes they were playing just about anywhere else. Now how cool is this? March Madness has found its way to Spokane this year. Crews have been hard at work getting everything ready at Spokane Arena. That includes a new floor, hoops, signage, press rooms, and more. Eight men's teams are in Spokane for the first two rounds of the tournament, so get ready to see lots of out-of-town fans in the area over the next few days. Here's a look at who's playing at Spokane Arena. Number five, San Diego State faces number 12, UAB, while number four, Auburn, takes on number 13, Yale. These first-round games will be played on Friday with the winners advancing to play on Sunday. Let's take a look at the other four teams, including one who probably wishes they were playing anywhere else. That would be number five, St. Mary's. You can expect a lot of boos for the Zags' uh, big rival there. The Gales tip off against number 12, Grand Canyon on Friday night. Number four, Alabama and number 13, Charleston also play on Friday. This is not the first time Hooptown USA has been picked to host the tournament. So what is it that keeps them coming back here? We sold out faster than any other arena in, in the, uh, the host sites, the first round host sites. Just excited uh, to, to be here, to get this going, and uh, to put on a show for the NCAA, for everybody across the country, and for Spokane. The NCAA just has higher uh, like expectations, um, and so it's just making sure all those little things are done and set up, ready to go. Another thing setting Spokane apart between the arena and games at the Kennels, Spokane is the only city to host both the men and women's tournaments. Up next, what does it take to win in the big dance? We all need to know that. We sit down with former Zag Matt Santangelo, hear what he remembers about his team's Cinderella run and why he says this year's Gonzaga squad reminds him of it. Welcome back to our Crim 2 Tournament Central Special. Now, this year marks the 25th straight year the Gonzaga men have played in the tournament. Simply remarkable. We met up with a former player who was part of the very first Cinderella run back in 1999. Former Zag Matt Santangelo was a junior when the team made it all the way to the Elite Eight. So what was it like finally making it to the big dance? We were just really, really excited to be there. I mean, kind of what you think. They say act like you've been there before. Well, we'd never been there before, so we didn't know how to act. Like it wasn't enough just to get there because it's really easy, especially back then, to have just said, hey, we did it. We made it to the tournament. We made it to the dance. Let's go enjoy it. Um, but that wasn't enough for that group. That 99 team was really something special. And get this, Santangelo says this year's team reminds him of that Cinderella squad. For this group, is it's using all that kind of fodder for fuel, you know, and kind of use it, use, put it up on the locker room. Everyone's picking McNeese State to be the 12-5 upset. 
get that up and make you mad. Put that, you know, put the weight of the chip on your shoulder and go out and find ways to win because that's what it's all about at this time of year is, is finding those little things that get you a little more motivated, a little more energized, a little more excited, and then focusing that in the right way and going out and playing your game. All right, thank you so much, Matt. We can't talk about March Madness without talking about brackets. President Biden released his annual NCAA predictions and he's given the cold shoulder to our local teams. Might be losing some votes out here for this. He doesn't have WSU or Gonzaga advancing out of the first round of the tournament. He's picked two number one seeded teams to take it all the way to the championship game. That hasn't happened since 2017 when Gonzaga took on North Carolina. This year, Biden predicts UConn will take home the trophy yet again. On the women's side, he has Iwu falling to Oregon State in the first round. He does have Gonzaga advancing to round two before getting knocked out by Utah. The president is picking South Carolina to wrap up their season undefeated, taking home the championship. We'll, of course, be watching to see how the Zags do, along with the Cougs and the Eags. And don't forget, Krim 2 has crews on the road to bring you special coverage of March Madness. Andrew Quinn out in Salt Lake City with the Gonzaga men and Amanda Rowley is in Omaha with Wazoo. They'll join us live after the team's first round games. And I'll be here to bring you all the highlights from our local teams throughout the tournament. Thank you so much for joining us for this Krim 2 Tournament Central Special. I'm Travis Green. Good luck with those brackets, everyone. May they not be busted on day one. We'll see you later.